As many of our viewers already know, one of the sources of data in contemporary science that we at the Maja Center like to pull from in order to show the likelihood of an absolute beginning of time and physical reality is the 2003 Bordovilinkin Guth proof from space-time geometry. Now, for our viewers who are unfamiliar with the BVG theorem, I would encourage them to check out our website, majacenter.com, and other video casts that we've produced on the topic that one can find on YouTube and Vimeo. Now, for our viewers who are familiar with the BVG theorem, they'll recall how the proof is based on the idea that as we trace the relative velocities of projectiles back into the past, we discover that at some point a finite time ago, they would have been virtually at the speed of light. And what this means for physicists is that past time has a boundary. Because physical energy, according to our current knowledge, cannot travel any faster than the speed of light. Thus, we could not trace the history of relative velocities of projectiles back any further beyond that boundary when they're virtually at the speed of light. Now, as many have noted, this proof seems to be based on the idea that physical energy cannot travel any faster than the speed of light. So the question is often asked, well, what if physicists would discover a particle, what they call a tachyon, that could travel faster than the speed of light. Would this nullify the conclusions of the BVG theorem? Well, in short, the answer is no. And the reason is because whatever the value of the upper limit velocity to physical energy is, the relative velocities of projectiles would have been virtually at that upper limit velocity at some point a finite time ago. So for example, Let's say if physicists would discover this hypothetical particle that could travel faster than the speed of light, what they call a tachyon, and let's say they discover that it can travel at 500,000 kilometers per second, which supersedes the value of the speed of light of 300,000 kilometers per second. The relative velocities of projectiles would have been virtually at that particular upper limit velocity of 500,000 kilometers per second at some point a finite time ago we would just simply have to trace the relative velocities of the projectiles back into the past a little bit further than what we originally thought when 300,000 kilometers per second was believed to be the upper limit velocity to physical energy, thus pushing the boundary or the beginning of past time back a little bit further. But the BVG conclusion would still stand past time would have to have an absolute beginning, no matter what the value of the upper limit velocity is. Now, this answer begs the question, well, why must there be an upper limit velocity to physical energy? Well, in short, the answer is, if there were no upper limit velocity to physical energy, and physical energy could travel at an infinite velocity, well, then we would have a host of physical contradictions in our universe. Let me explain. Infinite velocity entails a sort of omnipresence for the various forms of physical energy. Think about it. Finite velocity entails covering a certain amount of distance in a certain amount of time. So the higher the velocity, the more distance covered in the less amount of time. So infinite velocity entails covering all distances in an instant, in no time, being at every space-time point in the universe simultaneously. But this sort of omnipresence of the various forms of physical energy entails physical contradictions throughout the cosmos. For example, electron number one would be present at every space-time coordinate in the universe at the same time and in the same respect as electron number two that is, taking into consideration they had infinite velocity. Furthermore, these electrons would be occupying the same space at the same time and in the same respect that protons with infinite velocity are occupying. So you would have protons and electrons occupying the same space at the same time in the same respect. Obviously, this amounts to massive physical contradictions and thus is an impossible scenario, an impossible universe. The only way to prevent these physical contradictions is to have a parameter 
that disallows contrary forms of physical energy, such as protons and electrons, occupying the same space at the same time in the same respect. And that parameter must be an upper limit velocity to physical energy, preventing infinite velocity, which amounts to massive contradictions. So in conclusion, being that there must be an upper limit velocity to physical energy, unless we have all of these contradictions in our universe, and being that the value of that upper limit velocity does not affect the conclusions of the BVG theorem, I believe that the board of the lincoln guth proof from space-time geometry stands as very probative evidence, very probative scientific evidence, for an absolute beginning of time and physical reality, which, as we've already indicated in other video casts, metaphysically necessitates a transcendent creator. <laughs>